Welcome to the Ability6 interactive demonstration. The Ability6 application has two core applications within it, which is the skills matrix uh, and the capacity planner. Now, the skills matrix gives an outline of proficiency within a team or department or function, uh, and the capacity planner is, is uh, an essential tool for understanding of the team uh, when we overlay proficiency, what capacity do we truly have and what capacity can we release. So the aim really is to be able to create primarily the skills matrix. So once you've clicked on skills matrix, if we have a look at an example team, let's say credit finance, your aim is to produce something akin to this. So with this uh, view, you're able to see red is areas of focus or skills inefficiency, skills, skills proficiency opportunity. Uh, amber is in training and progressing. Ultimately, you want to get to three uh, or above, which is someone that is showing proficiency. So how do we get to this stage? Okay, so within our My Organization tab, we have to populate five areas, departments, teams, workforce, processes, and tasks. So if we start with departments, we can see here in this demonstration uh, account, there's six departments. There are ten teams, and those ten teams are assigned to various departments. Then you have your workforce, and your workforce is assigned to uh, teams. <coughs> now, there's a lot of data here uh, to, to capture initially, so what we've done is we've created the ability to bulk import this information. So from your current HR application, um, download the, the, the five uh, Excel tasks and I'll, I'll show you one of them. Pre-populate the information that's uh, within the Excel tab, save it and then you can upload it directly into the system and that will save you a lot of time. You then have processes. So if we have a look at one team. We can see here that this team credit, which is in the finance department, has seven processes. So processes are your high-level description of an activity. You then break that down into tasks. And there we see in that same team there are 35 tasks. Now, the reason you don't just go in at task level is some uh, teams will have several hundred, potentially even more tasks, uh, intricate steps uh, in, their, in their processes. And if you display that at a skills matrix level, your skills matrix becomes far too large to um, really interpret and, and drill down as to where the opportunities for skills development are. But once you have these five tabs populated, in your workforce tab, what you're able to do is you're able to select your individual so let's go with Nigel um, we go across to the score button and here we're able to allocate the scores uh, based on the proficiency key so 0 is no current proficiency requirement 1 there's a required proficiency but there's no current competence uh, 2 there's a required proficiency and there's partial competence level 3 they're showing a good competency level 4 they're showing an advanced level of, of proficiency and or able to train others. Uh, and then five, strategic influence. Now, by default, um, the only scores that are available are one to four. If you're wanting to expand and use the, the zero to five, you need to go into my settings, into system administration. And there's a whole variety of um, options to choose from in, on this page, including things like your regional data, your definition of skills competence. If you don't call them departments and you call them functions, you can amend all of that sort of information here. Uh, so have a good look at that page. I won't go in through in detail on this, this video, um, but that does give the, 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 your user parameters. So if we go back to the workforce uh, page, and we have a look, I think we were looking at Nigel. Um, so, in fact, we'll go with Domas because he's in credit and we've been using that as the example. So go score. What we're able to see here is, is all of the, the current skills proficiency. So we have actual score and target score. So, uh, new business reports, he's an actual level three uh, and the team leader 
uh, or the coach has defined that he wants a, a target score of four. Now you can go further and be um, specific on when you want that target date to to arrive. So um, if you're wanting Domes to be level four at New Business Reports by the end of quarter two 2020, then you can select quarter, the end of quarter two 2020. And what that will do is within the skills matrix, it will actually show you whether the individual is on target or overdue in terms of <clears throat> their, their proficiency targeting. But you need to go in and you need to allocate a score uh, based on your understanding of the individual's capabilities. Once you've done that, you then have your visual matrix so if we go to credit now, if we go at a very granular level, um, what we can see here are all of the scores. So Domas three, three, four, four, and we have the small score here of the target. Now, we wouldn't recommend that uh, when you first start out with this, you set the targets. The key is to get the baseline first. So if you go to my settings, advanced proficiency targeting, you can turn that off or hide it temporarily. Uh, when you then go back to your skills matrix, when you look at the task view, uh, you can see that those small scores are, are, are no longer there. Um, but what, you, what it's replaced with is an overall um, score that, that's just a manual feed that, that the team leader can populate. Uh, now getting all of this information in again is, is a, uh, can be a time consuming process. There's, um, there is one element that will help you and it's something that we've developed with, with our interactions with hundreds of different companies. Uh, and that is to actually ask the individual. So sit down with your team, go through at a granular level what your definitions of proficiency level 1, 2, 3 and 4 to try and remove as much subjectiveness as possible uh, and then go to the distribute workforce self-assessment. Now in here um, what you're able to do is you're able to define do I want to send a, a self-assessment request to one individual, an entire department team, a bespoke group or globally. But let's say we want to send it to one individual we want to send it to, uh, if we go to Domas, uh, when would you like to send it? So this is where you can schedule it at some point in the future. So if we didn't want to send it now, you'd, you'd define when and at what time you want to send it. And this is important to complete the parameters within the administration page to say, where are you in the world so that it sends at the right time. But let's, let's go on the basis that we're going to send it now. What security question do you want? Because this individual is going to receive a one-time access code um, to his application, to his profile, and he's going to be able to complete what he believes to be his current proficiency. Uh, so it can be potentially sensitive, so we would encourage you to use a password. Uh, if you're wanting to, if this is a, a, an assessment once the original baseline has been uh, recorded, do you want to reset the scores? So even if you've had a proficiency score in the past, do you want to force a reset to ensure the individual goes through one by one, or do you just want to retain the current scores and ask, are there any variants to that? Uh, now once you submit that, Domas will get the request. He then has 48 hours to complete uh, that request, otherwise it will expire. Now at the top of this page we have the self-assessment, manage workforce self-assessment, auto-commit settings turned off. Now what that means is uh, when you send a request and this toggle is off, all of the um, requests will come back into you as the team leader for you to assess. Now this is a really important, um, important step because it can help to force conversations that, that ought to be had. So if an individual consistently thinks they're a three or a four and the team leader thinks that they're a, a one, two or three, um, well then the team leader hasn't shared substance that, that is required with that individual, e.g. there are quality defects, you haven't completed the training. Um, it forces a very powerful conversation that is actually mutually beneficial. Uh, Likewise, if an individual thinks there are two and you think that they're excelling, there are three or a four, again, that, that's a very positive conversation to, to have with, with the team members and it engages everyone in the same sort of thinking. So at this stage, what you have is you have the capability to see what the proficiency volume is uh, per team and department. So within your Insights tab, and again, have a play with this because there's lots of useful insights that can help you drive capability and thus team, po team performance. Um, but if you have a look at the department and team proficiency, uh, if we go to a team level, what we can see is 
all of the team information is there in relation to proficiency. So you're able to see how proficient each team is. Um, now this is really important because when you start to think about capacity planning, if your this team here, domestic banking, digital banking, has a 57% proficiency rating, well if they have 10 people, arguably there's only 6 um, people's worth of proficiency within that team. So there's a direct correlation between proficiency and, and, and capacity. So if we drill down into a team from a capacity perspective, what we need to understand, so from the My Visual Matrix Capacity Planner, if we select our team, if we look at credit finance, what we're able to say is that this team has 240 hours worth of uh, individuals within the team, regardless of any competence. This is bums on seats. Um, team proficiency of 65.36%. If we then overlay shrinkage of 10%, so this is time that we accept that an individual isn't going to be working, so breaks, toilet time, um, talking with their friends, all, all of these various things that as, as prudent organizations we accept is, is good from a cultural perspective and adds benefits elsewhere, etc. But it's time that is, that is not working. Uh, therefore, the actual proficient hours available out of this pool of 240 is 141.18. When we then consider how much volume we get, uh, and for this take a, a three-month average and base it on a week, uh, we input the number of units we have of each process type, the time for a fully competent member of staff to complete it. We then are presented with a score of, a, oh, well, in this example, 161.5. So 161 hours worth of work is is required to be completed every week. You've only got 141 hours available of proficient time. So every week in this example, you'll be building a backlog of 20 hours worth of work. This is a very powerful tool for a team leader because from their perspective, um, they need to be using this to push and drive up team um, proficiency. In doing so, uh, they'll be able to evidence that their team is highly proficient, so if they're still unable to complete their work, then that's the, the, the finest argument to get more resource. Uh, where team leaders will consistently struggle to get more resource is when they can't evidence um, how proficient their team is. So in this example, uh, this team is under capacity. So holistically, this is where Ability6 is very powerful because uh, from a from a team uh, from a department manager's perspective and a senior manager's perspective, what you need to be doing is looking at the capacity planners across all of your functions um, to be able to say, well, where do we have too much resource currently? Where do we have too little resource? And where are we about right? Are we able to second and share resource around the organization, thus improving uh, the overall skills pool, um, driving down costs from unnecessary recruitment, um, and becoming a more proficient organization. So very two very, very powerful tools. Um, I will go into more detail in later videos, uh, but this is this is really just to, to give you a feel of the of the two strongest uh, elements of um, team leader tools that you can have.